It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Jazza. I'm Dave. I'm Jen. And I'm Rob. And we are playing 40k something something. Battle <laughs> Fleet Gothic. Ooh, this will be fun. Before we dive into it, quick plug for Black Magic for sponsoring us and bringing Tabletop Time back from the dead. So for all of your video production and streaming needs, check out Black Magic. Div Division Resolve is free, which we edit all of our channeled videos on and all this stuff. It's amazing. So go check it out and download it for free. But also the A10 Mini Pro ISO is a camera switcher, which you can stream from to all major streaming platforms. And it does all the camera switching. We do our chroma key on it because in program chroma key is crap it's amazing and they do great cameras that we're using so yeah huge thank you to black magic for hooking us up and i'd like to say uh, if you like seeing this kind of content and you want us uh, to see more content like this and in more worlds you're familiar with and you want a way to be involved in choosing those worlds uh consider supporting us on patreon uh, we really appreciate everything everyone's done for us so far uh and more of that support is just going to lead to more content greater content uh, and there's some great perks in their rewards. Uh, today we have a patron character uh, as well. Uh, yes. Uh, speaking of getting involved, we have a Reddit and a Discord where we'd love to see your fan art of all the stuff that you've created during our adventures. Um, we're pretty active on both, so please link everything. We'd love to see your stuff. Love it. They're up there. Oh, yes, they are. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, likewise, if you, uh, if you can't stick around on YouTube and you've got a, a long, nice drive or, you know, you want to chill out with your eyes closed and listen to some great stories, check us out on our podcast. You can access all of them on itstabletoptime.com forward slash podcasts. Beautiful. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. I think we need a bit of a bit of the scene being set to okay. get into so. 40k battle fleet. I know that we have a crew of new players here, and I really hope that for the viewers out there, this can help uh, give you a taste of some of the things you can do in Warhammer. Warhammer is not all Space Marines. Uh, you can do other things, and I want to... Sorry, wh sorry, wh what? Yeah, you're about to find out. Warhammer isn't just Space Marines. What I wanted to do is... Are I we not being Space Marines? You, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke. Okay. I knew. I knew it's a joke. We're so, safe. We're building up. So basically what I wanted to do is um, like Rob's just getting into Warhammer. Uh, Jazz is just getting back into Warhammer. Jen knows a bit, but you know, she knows she prefers the painting, not huge into the lore and the audiobooks, but we'll get you there. I'm kind of the lore nerd here, you know? So, um, what I thought we'd do is something that doesn't require that much knowledge from the player base because they will be playing the roles of Imperial citizens. Although they're, they're involved in the Navy, but we'll get to that. Um, so a lot of that knowledge, a lot of that world of 40K, the universe, they don't need to know it. So they don't know it. So where are we? What are we doing? Because we're about to create characters, but I want to give you the framework within which you're creating your characters. So this is Battlefleet Gothic. Welcome to the 41st millennium. It's early 40, 41st millennium. And in the Gothic sector of, uh, in the Bean Moor subsector, you are currently en route via warp translation to the Fularis system. You are aboard the lunar class cruiser Thanatos, <laughs> flying in formation with its sister ship, another lunar class cruiser, the Lethal Countenance. The ship has approximately 100,000 souls aboard, and you've been traveling through the warp to respond to a distress signal from Phalaris for the past month. Now, broader context, uh, you're in a sector of space that fringes on the Eye of Terror. And what the Eye of Terror is in the most simple terms, it is basically a rift into hell, effectively. Um, you and your battle fleets in Battlefleet Gothic stand as the bulwark against potential invasions from that realm. Uh, what comes from that, you as crew members on this ship simply call the enemy or, or enemies. Uh, it is strictly censored and uh, the, the true nature of what you're fighting, but you know that there are traitors involved. Um, there have been a huge string of new conflicts spurring up out of nowhere. At first, it seemed to be just border skirmishes. Uh, it's, at first, it was just little things going missing and no one was putting together the pieces because raids happen all the time from pirates and things like that. It's becoming uh, evident that this is an invasion of a scale that hasn't been seen before and you are fighting uh, for the very survival of mankind against okay. the enemies. Yeah. So, 
you are all crew members aboard this ship, the Thanatos, which mm-hmm. is a light, uh, it's not a light cruiser, it's a lunar class cruiser, it's a standard cruiser. Um, it's a big ship. They're like three kilometers long and like I said, 100,000 crew aboard roughly. Um, I'm quite happy for you to be kind of whatever you want to be on the ship in terms of what you would think of for crew roles. I'm happy to guide and support mm. you in those roles. Um, I'm feeling religious. Okay. I, like this is, we're still the Imperium, so we're oh, very yeah. emperor serving. So mm-hmm. I, I sort of, I'm feeling like uh, sort of hooded, like a bit grimer worm tonguey, not necessarily in character, but just that sort of ultra, slightly creepy, but very... Yep. praising of the emperor and, and mm-hmm. always keeping an eye out for people who aren't who aren't uh, following the sure. ways of the Imperium. Um, Jen, what are you thinking? Um, I'm thinking of playing just basically like new recruit, fresh okay. on the boat, sort of soldier, not seasoned at all, um, just yet yeah, generic. So you're a infantry. naval crew, like a, a, yeah. a marine, we'll call it. Yeah, I probably will. In space? Are you a space marine? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it out there. there. Te- technically, on a technicality. <laughs> so you guys, I mean, you're all uh, you're all religious. A space yeah, marine yeah. to you. Now let's take this down to that level. Yeah, is an angel of the emperor. We're like scummy humans. But they're like gods. So they're yeah. angels. It's yeah. like if, if you see a space marine, like a lot of imperial citizens will drop to their knees at the sight of a space marine in like religious deferation. Yep. Um, it's that big a deal. Um, that because the fiction presents space marines as the face of the company, uh, it doesn't get across the fact that in the law they're actually exceedingly rare. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the, the the weird sad mix of it is they're the emperor's angel of death, and most people who live to see a space marine don't live for very long. Because if a space marine is deployed in your immediate vicinity, yeah, stuff's going down. Things are really <laughs> bad. Yeah. Um, there are no space marines aboard your ship. Yeah. All right, we're ready to introduce our characters. Oh, I'm stoked to hear it. For our first 40k of many, if I get my way. Hey, I'm pretty sure you'll get your way. Let's yes. be honest. I think, uh, <laughs> think we're going to want to jump back into this. Uh, Jen, do you want to get us started? Mm, sure. Our fresh faced um, new recruit. So, my name is Declan. Um, I am a fresh faced recruit. Um, I went through military training um, to be a Marine. And this is my first journey. Describe yourself. What do you look oh, like? Um, I am. So I'm a boy. I'm gonna mm-hmm. be a boy today. Nothing. No facial hair or anything. Maybe a little bit of stubble, but not a beard or anything. Um, and I've got a big scar, like a. Um, How'd you get the scar? Scratches. Um, I want to say just through training. Like it gets pretty vicious and pretty tough, and sometimes they sort of have to knock you down a peg if you think that you're Ooh. too too high and mighty so yeah i have to ask you a quick question mm. are you like marine tier or are you like like a fresh race recruit to like the marines mm-hmm. or are you a fresh face recruit to like the schlubby deck guards security officers i would say to the marines but i've like hell yeah i've like just made it like, yeah, yeah yeah so you might have got that in the scholar progenium if you went to it which is where the best bright brightest candidates go to which would explain why you've got attributes yeah. um and they have fights to the death yeah. yeah sounds good you then in that case i have to give you a piece of equipment you are actually going to be equipped with uh carapace armor which is basically better than what imperial guardsmen get it's like full body like Basically sci-fi armor. It's not powered, but it is heavy duty. So you're going to have armor of four. Um, and I'm actually only going to give you a neg one to combat rolls rather than neg two because it's futuristic, highly mobile, highly effective armor. Cool. Um, but yeah, you have carapace armor, which is very effective. Okay. All right. Robert, take it away. My character is called Pugness. P-U-G-N-U. Pugness. Pugness. I love it. Pugness. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> he is a uh, <laughs> very short. Five, I, I went five foot six. I feel like that's very yeah. short. Uh, oh. So short, well I mean, muscled. He's bald. He has a Franz Joseph moustache. What's Franz? that one? That's... That's oh, for like the, the podcast ooh. listeners, the sweepy around. Well, it's, it's a beard and a moustache. Okay, so it's like a handlebar moustache right? that goes up to the sideburns. If, if I shaved there, the chin. Yeah. So the chin has been shaved, but you have. Gonna, you're going to be descriptive with your facial hair down, for podcast follow listeners. The sideburns that come down, follow the jawline, and then reach up a handlebar the, moustache yeah. and go up with nothing on the chin. Spot on. Love That's it. Love it. Joseph. Um, he's, again, short. He's very well muscled and stocky. 
Captain Price from Modern Warfare, I think, has that. Anyway, moving on. I think so, yeah. So he's very short, very stocky, very well-muscled, and he's a menial engineer. Cool. Yeah, love it. I am Brother Valtar of the religiousness. The of the Thank you. Of the Adeptus Ministorium. Thank you, those words. I'm mainly on you for... I've heard them all and I read them, but I even not remember them. There are going to be people who are going to be like, that's incorrect. Guys, give us... Cut us a slack. I love 40K, but we're not... We're just sharing it and enjoying it. 40Kers. Yeah. Yet. I'm Brother Valtar. I'm... I look, I look on the older gentleman side. I, I'm so, I sort of hunch and wear robes, uh, and I'm slightly withered looking. And in, but, but I, I'm battle ready. So I have a chainsword, my holy righteous chainsword, which I can use and have used and been oh, yeah. very trained for back in the day. How old are you? Uh, it's normal age wise for humans. I'm assuming uh, they actually generally humans can like lifespan is probably about twenty years. They live to like a hundred, hundred and twenty without much augmentation. Okay. Right. You can live for five hundred years with if you're. I'm powerful. probably at the phase where I'm starting to need augmentation to keep going. Oh, so you're like a hundred? Yeah, yeah, but like battle capable. Yeah, yeah. Well, more than battle capable. A hundred okay. year old, you would have seen war. You would yeah. have strode through like heretics with that chainsword in your heyday. Yeah, that's that's, um, that's brother. I'm surprised brother. that you're not of a higher station at that stage then. So you've probably done something to keep you from being maybe you prefer to stay on the front line. Maybe he's go- maybe brother Valtar is going through some penitence. Uh, oh. Was a little too foolhardy or, or uh, created some rifts and now cool. he is uh, seeking to become closer to the light of, of the emperor by bringing others unto the emperor mm-hmm. and killing heretics where possible. Hell yeah. yeah. Love killing heretics. All right. Let's kill some heretics. Oh. <laughs> so, are you ready? Bring Let's it. do it. Currently, you are all sleeping in the same dorm area. In this particular ship, uh, all the crew of, like, human status we're calling subhuman and human status for the way they rank all crew of human status that aren't like elite are assigned into dormitories based on their area of the ship they live in not based on their like like their position Mm -hmm. so you're all sleeping in the same dormitory um you are actually very lucky you're currently during warp translation so you get to have a four hour sleep cycle um which is double what you usually get in action um so you are currently all asleep until everything goes silent. You all awake due to the, there's a momentary sensation of nothing, which is completely abnormal because you're on a ship, you're used to the constant humming and reverberation and all the lights are off, everything's off. And then it all just turns back on. And you're all sitting up awake in your beds. And I want you all to make a raw intelligence check. To start with, starting the session with some rolls. It's good. So. I'm purple. Yay. The DC of this check. Challenge level. Challenge level. God, I've been playing, I played two (laughs) rounds of D&D on the weekend. Uh, (laughs) the, The challenge level is one. Oh, okay. Or intelligence. Just your intelligence. Uh, so base three. So you pass. Uh, Jen rolled one success. Rob has rolled no successes. Oh, <laughs> five, Full five successes. successes. <laughs> uh, five successes from. I'll, I'll have to get your names again. So what was your name again? I'm Brother Valtar. Valtar. Pugnus. Pugnus. And De- <laughs> Declan. De- De- Declan. Declan. I'll get there. Um, so. Pugnus, mm-hmm. you you blink a few times, awake. I see you, 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 I see you. Look across the room and there is a figure standing there looking at you in the darkness. Come to me, come, 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 come closer, come closer, come closer. Pugnus, Pugnus, come. I can give you everything you want, everything you want. Come closer, come closer, come closer. Hey, what the hell are you about? And it vanishes. You shake your head. An alarm strikes and sounds once. And then stops. All the lights turn red in the ship. You hear crying from a bunk across the room. 
Are we sharing a... You're all in a dormitory of maybe like 40 people, but there's okay. only like 10 beds occupied yeah, at this but time. But we're all in the same room. You are all in the same room. You hear sobbing from across the room, becoming increasingly loud. On the other side of the room, a rhythmic bang <laughs> starts to sound. I'm just sort of out of character asking. I'm assuming as a very religious and more experienced person, I will know of some of the effects of the warp or... Uh, yes, warp is very, very dangerous uh, travel. Uh, you're constantly at risk. Uh, your ship's protected by a gala field, uh, which prevents the warp from getting in. Basically, for the unindoctrinated, in 40k, faster than light travel is effectively served by breaching into hell itself, traveling through hell, and then popping back out into reality. It's called the Realm of Chaos, or the Immaterium, uh, and the only way it's possible yeah, to do is with this thing called a gala field. Effectively, your ship brings a pocket of reality with them that surrounds the ship uh, that keeps the... Is that where we're traveling currently? You're in the warp right yeah, now. Okay. You're in warp translation. And, uh, and Or you're in warp transit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, your gala field keeps you safe. But you know that the predations of the warp are constant and mm. the thing is there. Although, you only know of it as the taint of chaos. These guys, it, they don't even know about it. It is, yeah. it is secret. People don't talk about the risk. They just know it's bad. Brothers, wield your faith. There is something afoot. Bloody hell, what's all that noise then? What the hell's going on here? I want to go in bed. Perception today. check? All right, so you're jumping out of bed? Yeah. Do you want to start gearing up or are you just going to... Okay. No, Can I perception? Yeah, make a perception check. Challenge level. Uh, challenge level, you're still in your bed? I will have... Got you up. stand up. Yeah. You're going to go over and look. Yeah, and grabbing my things, but... Heading on. over to yeah. the banging? Yep. Okay, so perception, uh, challenge level two. Yeah. He's rolled a lot of successes. Five successes. Yeah. As you approach, not only uh, uh, you're familiar with the sound, it is the sound of flesh hitting metal, and it gets louder, and then it starts getting wet as there's a slapping noise. I shout out, Who is that? And do you come in the name of the Emperor Almighty? There is no reply. I turn you, around you, to the others in the room and I signal to wield your weapons. And you approach the banging? Yeah. You reach a bunk. Uh, it's the bunk of Osmond Bassett, who is a... Um, he's about 18. This is his first void ship uh, thing. You've been staying in the bunk with him for a month. Um, seems fairly nice. Uh, and you see... Uh, that he is sitting upright in bed with his back against you and slamming his head into the bulkhead. Osmond, is that you? Bloody hell. There's no response other than the banging of his head. I clamber down and go to hold him and, and I say, don't give in, do not give in to the forces of chaos, though they whisper. So you step in towards him. Yeah. And I'm rolling a destiny roll. Oh boy. <laughs> the result 20. is 20. Oh, that's in my favour. You pull him back and his scalp is split open and there's blood oh. wet like across the uh, the Jesus sort of bulkhead. Yeah. But thankfully it does seem that he hasn't caused permanent damage to himself. And as you pull him back, he shakes his head and looks at you and he's like, Brother, 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 brother. Where am I? Tell Where am me I? What? What did the what did the, what? the forces of chaos speak to you? What, what, what forces of what, what are you talking about? Where what? did you go? I just, Where was your soul taken? Uh, no, 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 nothing. nothing. Mate, you've bloody cracked yourself like an egg. <laughs> I mean. He puts his hand up and he's like, "What? What? What's happening to us? What happened to you?" Ah, uh, I. S they sing to us. The choir sings to us. Ain't no one singing in here, mate. Yeah, the, the music is gone now, but they they called me to them. I want to roll a, perse a persuasion check mm -hmm. to preach, to bring him back to the light, back to the emperor. Okay. Okay. Make a persuasion check. Challenge level. He's got to oppose it, but he doesn't want to oppose it. Is there still an alarm going on? Yeah, the klaxons are sounding. Uh and you're all standing around, or are you gearing up? You'd be needing to gear up if you yeah. want to be wearing this. So yeah, you're, yeah. yeah, in the corner, Declan is loading carapace armor onto themselves. Yeah. Um, cool. Challenge level. Challenge level. It's an opposed check. Okay. Because it's a persuasion. So one, two, three. He doesn't uh, have to resist. Like if he's if it's resist, he doesn't want to resist. Oh, good point. <laughs> uh, so he two. got two. You got three. Yeah. So you, 
Um, you feel that you pull him around a little bit and he calms down and he's like, Preacher, I would never stray from the light of never the Never stray from the light. The Emperor protects, the, brother. The Emperor protects, of course. And he clutches at a like little holy book. Um, I call out to the room. It seems we are facing opposing forces in the warp in which we travel. Bear your faith on your shoulder and gird your loins. <laughs> It's a thing. People say gird your loins, okay? Yeah. The ship shudders. You feel the spine of the ship shake as like it's almost like turbulence in a plane. This alarm the the sort I'm of assuming we have contacts cycling. too. The there is no Vox uh in your well, there'd be one Vox bead okay. on the dorm, but it lays silent. Brother Pugness, do you know if this could have anything to do with the mechanics of the ship? What stage is the ship in currently? Do I know this? Um, you'd know that if something was going wrong with the power, engineering would probably be the place to go. Um, I'm not sure, but maybe we should check out engineering. Lead the way. You lads ain't going anywhere without me. I'll grab my gun. This... This is Vivalov, your captain speaking. Stay calm, strong souls of the Emperor. Man your posts. And then it just cuts out. The Emperor protects. The Emperor protects. Emperor protects. <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> Lead the way, Brother Pugness. All right, so you're heading to engineering. Yeah. To my post. The door opens. Uh, so you press a button, the door like lifts up to the ground. <laughs> and uh, with it, it's like it was sitting in a puddle of blood and just blood like splashes up to the roof and then falls down to the ground. Why me? Yay. Yay. Uh, there's, there's just a puddle of blood in like the seam of where the door was, but no sign of where it now might have, have come from. Have I seen this sort of thing no. before? Okay. All right. No. So this is uncommon. This is not something that you want to be happening. Okay. <laughs> Can we tell where it's come from? No. It's just like it was in the, in the thing. This I, is some dark stuff happening in here. I'm, I'm reading from my prayer book as we walk. <laughs> Just going to continue walking, albeit a little bit slowly. The uh, the choir sort of sounds that generally fill the ship uh, sort of begin to waft over you as enter the corridor. Um, the hymnals are being sprouted from the lips of uh, sort of faceless servitors. I think it's the other one. It is. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, and there, the, the voices are coming from the lips of these faceless servitors and Vox speakers are just uh, spewing out like the gentle choir of imperial faith. Uh, the vaunted hallways that you're in, uh, are long and winding, uh, lead you close to engineering. Uh, there is a general level of calamitous motion and movement in the ship. Uh, a few people are running to and fro. It seems like so everyone's aware something. Ev- something very strange has happened. Um, and as you round a corner heading towards engineering, uh, from one of the maintenance cupboards, you just hear a help, 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 help. I'll go and open it. Cool. I'll stand there with yeah. my. Right, so, sounds like there's someone in there. I would warn my brethren to be careful of the voices they heed at this time. I sense a breach. <laughs> aye, aye. You open the cupboard. Yeah. The door swings open and you are face to face with a man. His upper torso extends from the wall. The rest of him is merged into it in a blend of flesh and metal. And he just looks at you with one arm. The other arm is like fused into the wall and he's just going, help, help. Help! Help! Is there anyone in the corridor? No, he's in like a ma- like a little maintenance I mean, offshoot thing. Yes, no, oh, there's a few walking. people moving back and forth, but no one's paying attention. Lots of servitors moving around. Yeah, I'm gonna look at Val- Valtor. Yeah, uh, Valtor. Valtar. Valtar. I'm gonna look at Valtar and just be like, uh, huh. Now, in my experience, is this something that where like? Is he exposed to the forces of chaos? Is this is this is the Emperor's mercy. That you would be That's wanting. what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. This, this is, is like... No, there's no... Sense. Let's save this man from the chaos. Straight away. Yeah. Almost immediately. I pull out the... Uh, that was my next yep. step, yeah. Chainsword and... 
<laughs> so you just yeah, straight away like execute this abomination that's fused with the wall. Who May you- the emperor take your soul under his wing. <laughs> you would have seen, yeah, you've seen the guy's face around. He was just a regular dude who worked down like a menial like you. Mm-hmm. Um, Bastard owed me money. <laughs> <laughs> and you step back out on your way towards engineering. And as you cross a few more bulkheads, you hear a very unfamiliar sound for the ship, but a familiar sound to some of you. The clatter of gunfire and people rushing for the first time, not towards, but away. Prepare yourselves. We need answers. I hit my wrench in my hand. He's swinging it, clapping it. Yeah. You dash down towards the engineering section and uh, you reach a bulkhead that is closed in front of it is your superior officer lieutenant edith vesta wearing her full carapace wielding a last gun there are three other uh imperial militia with her or naval soldiers uh laying at their ground are another roughly strewn around of five of your comrades who are all laying on the ground with the bullet wounds running them ragged uh the bulkhead is currently closed they look she looks up at you she says Declan, about bloody time you showed up. Ma'am. And who are you two? Preacher? Nods at you. Agnes, engineering. Can you wield a gun? Uh, poorly, yeah. She kicks a last rifle over to you from one of the dead soldiers. What has happened here? <sighs> Menials. They've overtaken the engineering deck. It was shockingly well planned, I must say. Bastards little background if I would I know what menials are menials are basically like him oh so I turn to you <laughs> so what like insurgents or what do you call it traitors traitors amongst us. oh no cool there are heretics on our ship something like that either way they go down easy and she just pats her rifle did you know anything about this no <laughs> <laughs> you lying to me. No. Do I know anything about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You, oh, all right then. I'm not the sh- sharpest tool. Keeping an eye on you though. Watch your... Behind. <laughs> also, you're holding this the wrong way. You guys ready for this or what? Just lead the way. The Emperor protects. She slaps a console and the bulkhead slides open and immediately a, a hail of gunfire starts... Uh, pouring down upon you. Um, what would you like to do? So in front of you, you can see the large open space of one of the many engineering decks. Uh, there are several bulkheads you can move up between. There are enemies in like rafters and sort of bolt holes firing uh, from what you can... I'll get you to make perception checks okay. to get some more information. Yeah. Challenge level... Uh, Again, challenge level three. Okay. And but if you do do really well, I'll give you a little bit more. One, two, three, four. I say the me. creature Voltar Voltar has noticed. Two successes. Declan has not. Declan has got two successes. And Pugnus has got two successes. The two of you are a sort of narrowly looking down the gun uh, but you get a broader uh, Valtar gets a broader view of the combat uh, there are several menials that look maddened in the eyes uh, they are holding makeshift weapons, stolen weapons they're not particularly good uh, you imagine they'd been working on them in the lower decks mm-hmm. uh, you also see freed slaves amongst them um, imperial ships use a lot of slavery uh, who are also wielding similar equipment there are bodies laying all around the engineering deck of other menials. Um, there also appears to be a bunch, like heaps of dead servitors, and a, and it seems like there are a pair of engine seers, uh, tech priest engine seers, uh, who are at the center of the room, who are mostly obliterated by some kind of makeshift explosion. You just sort of see the remains of their red uh, Mars cloaks. Do I see a leader or uh, some sort of weak point or point of strength they're protecting? Um, no, it just seems like madness. Yeah. Absolute bedlam. They don't seem to have a leader. It's not that you don't see one. They actually just don't seem to have a leader with them. I'm assuming I'm making a connection to the forces of chaos, if you say that's something I have some familiarity it, with. This or? looks like traitors. This, like, I mean, there's no 
obvious mutation or warp taint that okay. you can see. Is there anything I would know about is having worked with these people that are apparently rebelling? Um, make a make a destiny roll. Ooh. You make the roll. Let's just see how you do. Let's see random chance. Eighteen. Eighteen. That's pretty good. That's a really good result. So no, you don't know anything about them. Uh, they haven't involved you in their plans. They, you're, you, you're not hiding anything. In this case, knowing stuff is a really bad yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you don't know them well even. It's, they're kind of a different clique. Yeah, okay. Mm. So, confronted with gunfire and this entryway, what are your plans? Do I shoot? The, uh, the <laughs> Edith has already started opening fire. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Already oh. shooting. I take cover and is there, was I given a gun or do I just have you my have chainsaw? You have chainsaw and faith. Fuck it, that's all I need. Okay, so you're going to charge in? <laughs> I'll probably skirt about to uh, avoid the crossfire and see if I can get in as close as possible to Okay. Group I can provide you with cover as well. You're going to. I would like to try and shoot people on the roof. Should say that. Does Declan rafters. say that? I'll give you cover, mate. All right. What? Did, what's the, the the emperor protects? Emperor protects. <laughs> so I'm going to get Declan to make a uh, a gun proficiency, uh, a firearm proficiency assist roll for your character to. You're, uh, you're going to charge in, right? Yep. Um, uh, brother Volta. Brother Volta. So you're going to charge in, Voltar. So I'm happy for you just you're just running up the guards. So athletics. I was probably going to go on the sides to a yeah. So if you're going fast and powerful, I'd say athletics. If you're going cheeky and vaulty, I'd say acrobatics. If you're trying to sneak, well then it's probably going to be stealth. If I'm, if it's just me and my faith, can I assist myself with my faith? I think you've got a strong enough assist from. We don't want to bog it down. I don't have a good. As, I can assist myself as well. I don't have a good athletics. All I have is my faith and my chainsaw. <laughs> um, I'm going to say it would just draw more attention to yourself. Really? I mean, look, you, you, how, I don't know, how, how is your faith allowing you to be athletic? I just, if the, the energy of the emperor, like, protects me. I think we'll save something <laughs> for that for later. Okay. Right okay. now, no. Okay. All right. Oh, when you make your assist roll. All right. Um, oh, oh that's no. Wait, oh, you've wrote, no, that's wrong. Is no, it? no, 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 way. So you have, you have, you're making a combat proficiency. So you have base three. Yeah. Plus you have your attributes, which is five. Plus you have your two extra dice from your skill. So you have two extra dice. On top of that. Plus the weapons effect mm. itself. Yeah, which is... So four, what's the total roll? Four. Another two. Four D6. It's still really bad. Wow. Four D6 That's really on top of that from a last rifle. Roll two more dice and please roll them really no, she, well. She gets four more dice. Four more oh, dice four on top of that. Last That's one, rifle. two, three, four, yeah. five, six, Plus four seven. D6 for the gun. Great. Cool. Please do a good roll. I was giving you a huge <laughs> I've been really roll. disappointed in roll so far. Jenny. Okay, you get right. negative one success. So Yay. I'm of a total how is that of negative one. Because only two successes. Only, yeah, out, of two successes. out of three. Out of three. Out of how many dice? Yeah. Five, six, ten, yeah. eleven <laughs> dice. You're like, I'll cover you. Eleven dice. And you're dice. like, shoot like, me in the back. Can we get a stat check on that in the comments, please? <laughs> like, what's the chance of that That's happening? That's <laughs> Great. Oh, really good. Can we switch cool. dice back? No. <laughs> Turns out needed, like need enough faith to... Jeez Louise. Basically, I, with one loss, I have two dice to roll with. What's the challenge level of charging down the middle and not dying in the first ten minutes of our game? Um, <laughs> give me a one? Or <laughs> no, no, I was going to say it's, yeah. it's, it's challenge level three originally. Do we have destiny points to You've got destiny. Can I assist points. with my faith now, please? You'll just make it worse. Will I? Fine, you can give me my with faith. Your faith. I'll do Thank this you. once, but next time I'm not letting you have it. I need my faith right now, okay? Because I am in trouble. Okay, you, get, plus you counter one. the the. You get one. You get four successes, so you counter the, the failure that the. So now you've got challenge Sorry, three Declan. on three dice. <laughs> Jeez. All right. None. Ooh. I got none. This is a critical foul. <laughs> That's a. Good... The emperor protects. Please. <laughs> Does the Emperor protect? Destiny roll. 20. The Emperor oh. protects! That's two in a row. That was a 20. So you, sounds like this is a fail forward. A critical <laughs> fail and a 20 on the Destiny roll. <laughs> that is the ultimate like, <laughs> confusing thing. All right. So that was the Emperor protects right there. The universe 
Brother, Confirming. Brother Volta charges into the center of the room. He raises his chainsaw as he lunges. Like, you're running towards someone who's maybe, like, 40 meters away from you. <laughs> He's got a gun. You charge at them. You shriek out, you know, the Emperor protracts. Yep. As you lift up, because you hastily got ready out of bed, you haven't properly secured everything, and one of your religious books falls forth, lands on your foot, and you trip over forward. Yay. Immediately, a flurry of gunfire flies <laughs> through the air <laughs> where you were just standing. <laughs> Not only that, grenade detonations in the area have weakened the floor and you actually smash through a weakened portion of the bulkhead. It's kind of like a graded bulkhead that you can crawl underneath mm -hmm. and you drop beneath the floor <laughs> level into like a crawl space. <laughs> You can see the crawl space extends uh, towards you up and into the midst of where the defenders If I didn't are get a 20... Oh, you would have been fucked. Yeah. <laughs> the Emperor protects. So the Emperor does protect Emperor in his protects. own way. So you're now in a crawl space uh, beneath the floor that actually extends all the way into engineering and has maintenance hatches that pop up. I'm crawling. You're crawling. Like what a, are you two doing? Like a, you're nobody's. covering fire. Moving up as we... Mm -hmm. I've been trying to fire at people in the rafters. Okay. So uh, make, the rafters. A, make an attack roll. Is it Edith? Is that who? Yeah, yeah. Edith Vesta. Yeah, then I'm, I just want to kind of follow her at the borders. Yep. I get four for the weapon? Uh, yeah, plus four for the weapon. Nice. Okay, that actually was good. You rolled four, better than me. Four successes. You did roll better than yeah. Let's face it, it's not hard to roll better than you at this point. Okay, so uh, you you score some minor injuries. You sort of clipping blows, but you're not very accurate. You're, yeah. you're, you push a few people back into cover, but um, generally you don't seem to manage to make a big dent on them. That's fine. How about you, Declan? Just keep moving up, keep shooting. Cool, advancing. Um, I'm going to get you to make a... Uh, do the same. So we'll get you to make a combat roll. Just do one. Their combat roll stands, though, which was three. I'm doing it individually because there's like 30 of them. All right, fair so uh, it basically, we're not doing a full combat for this because you've got heaps of assistance and it's kind of more a set piece. Mm -hmm. But we'll just do one general combat roll uh, for each of you to just determine to how effective time. you yeah. are uh, as you advance. So they get three successes again. So it's three, four, and then another four. Is that correct? So you have 11 dice. Four, six, eight. What? Arithmetic is hard. Why 11? Because she should have Three. seven Five, base six, stats, seven, eight, four eight, dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she let's has two, let's like write double, down the number of, of our combat rolls. <laughs> yeah. She has two go. points oh, yeah. in proficiency. Yeah, but I've got one to minus combat rolls because of my armor. Oh, yeah, sorry, you're so right. Ten? So 10. I forgot about that. Yep, no, you're correct. 10. When Good work remembering that you have armor. Make it count. One, two, three, four, five successes. Cool. You're more effective, but still not deadly. That's uh, fine. You slam a few shots into some menials, and you know a few of them drop back from cover. Uh, and generally, destiny roll a six. Ooh. Generally, uh, it's difficult. Another troop drops. A few menials get killed. Uh, as you, but you slowly advance. But it is a slog. Um, meanwhile, underneath the floorboards. Right, yeah, I find like, the tightest cluster of people behind some cover or whatever, mm -hmm. and I start off by slamming my chainsaw up through the ground, just turn it on, and then s push Bow. up through the ground and just swing around me. Is okay, what I'm going make a combat roll. All right. Boom. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to use a destiny point to make that six. Six successes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm going to... I'm going to give them a situational negative modifier because they had no idea that was coming. So they have neg one dice. They get three Ooh. successes still. You got six. Um, you seriously wound several soldiers as you burst out. And then um, the it's almost like the back of their, uh, their resistance breaks because suddenly there is a priest in their ranks <laughs> massacring, like cutting them apart. And the advance uh, pushes on with a bit more Yeah, gusto. I was going to say, at least it would defer oh, their it attention. It completely so scattered their attention. Yeah. Cool. And you burst forth, uh, push forth, and put them down, and, and the remaining menials flee off. Another couple of the soldiers drop until it is actually just Edith, one other soldier, and yourself, Declan. 
Uh, you stand sweating in the engineering deck and regroup, trying to work out what exactly has just gone on. We're regrouping. Mm-hmm. All yeah. of us. So, so we've overcome. Yep. That, yeah. They've fled. You've broken the, their backs. Where the bloody hell have you been? Who are you saying that to? Oh, the friend. <laughs> Belt. Just clearing the way. Don't give me your attitude. Not bloody good you job, mate. You were meant to cover me. <laughs> yeah, uh, about that. Mm. Yeah, uh, gun jammed. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. you tripped over. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can. It is because of my belief in the Emperor that he protected me, enabling me to fall through the floor and breach their fire. Silver linings. I might have looked silly while it happened, <laughs> but I am alive and the Emperor... Oh, damn it. <laughs> the Emperor's message of faith continues. Um, I'll just turn to Edith. Mm-hmm. Oh, so what now? She... Uh, Reloads, checks the ammunition in her last rifle, and she looks at you and she says, um, All right, soldier, find out what the hell's going on here, and me and this rookie will uh, watch out the corridors and make sure we don't get jumped. No worries, ma'am. So she's basically ordered you to investigate the area and work out what's Us going on. Us three or, or Declan? By association, the three of you. Okay. You in, lads? I'll cover you. Lead the way. All right. So who's going to. What are you doing? You're in a large engineering deck. There's a bunch of machinery. There's some very hastily erected uh, barricades, and there's some uh, dead engine sears and a lot of corpses around. Where did they seem to be coming from? What direction were they? They scattered through, like, scattered to the wind, so to speak. So they basically just left through every door that was closest to them. So there's no clear. Yeah. Seem to know this way, way pretty well, Veltor. Do you have any ideas? Can I roll perception to see what roles of uh, these people generally filled and where they're in the ship they might have in general come from yep. to sort of track their origins. Mm-hmm. Uh, just a general perception. Yeah, perception's fine. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. five. Uh, I should have said a challenge level. I should have asked. Yeah, mm-hmm. I always right. forget. Um, so, look, that wouldn't have been five. It would have been, like, a two or a three. So you smash it. Um, they're all engineering menials uh, and various slaves from the lower decks, but they're just um, basically from similar places to where you came from. I it seems s- like there's been some kind of internal yeah, uprising. I, I say to Pugnus, have you noticed any deference in the engineering quarters? People whispering to each other, seeming to make plans or... Groups. Uh, no, not honestly, no. They tend to avoid me. Mm. Perhaps we should go to where they come from. It seems there is a lack of faith among the lowers of the ship. Sounds like no that. offense. <laughs> <laughs> Your will, brother. <laughs> Your will. The Emperor's will. I say firmly. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, Edith look, look, like cranes her head back uh, and is like, so what have you found? Uh, I, I told you to investigate this, soldier. Yeah, we're investigating, all right? Take us to the end. Ing- I say this to Pugnus. Take us to some of the other engineering quarters. Sure thing. I'll lead the way. So what are you doing? I'm just following them. You're really <laughs> following them? Yeah. Okay, so you're disobeying your direct order to investigate the immediate room that you're currently standing in. Oh, I thought she meant investigate what's going no, on. she's like, she's like, oh. check out this room. Oh, that Let's wasn't check clear. out this room. <laughs> that was not clear. Just, we'll keep following That's you. why she's covering the room. They've gone to the doors to like hold the doors. All right, we're splitting the party. We're going to go check out the engineering rooms. I'm taking the engineer with me. Okay. Okay. I'll Declan invest- can investigate this. I'll so investigate the room. Make a perception check. And the challenge level is a split challenge level of two and four. So there's some information at two and some at four. Use the destiny. Can I use the destiny? Make it four successes. So if you rolled three successes, you want to make uh, make it four. Yep, mark off a destiny point. All right. You begin investigating. And Declan uh, goes back to the training you received at the academy. And as you look, things begin to not add up. You start to realize that there's no 
there's no significance to this part of engineering. Uh, there's no damage that's been done to any particular machinery that could have affected uh, the ship in such a way. Uh, it seems as if this is kind of unrelated to whatever happened. Uh, and then you hone in on the tech priests and you see that they have been destroyed by an improvised explosive device when they reached the console. And as you put the pieces together, it suddenly dawns on you that this entire coup is uh, has all the hallmarks of a distraction. Okay. Then I'll run up to Edith. It's like, blimey, this, this isn't good. There is an ear-splitting, sp- ringing sound that fills your heads as the lights in the whole ship turn off. And Edith turns to you to reply, and her empty, bleeding eye sockets <laughs> stare into yours. <laughs> and that's... I wonder what's going to happen next. <laughs> that's where we're going to leave it for now. Oh, what a tantalising part one to a one-shot. Is it called a two-shot, or is it a... What happens if it's a one-shot in two parts? Is it a two it's shot? A one, well, it's one. It's a one it's shot one part game. One. Yeah, yeah, one game session. Yeah. So we're hoping that. Um, let us know in the comments what you feel about the make idea. Make your guesses. Well, make your guesses, mm. but also this is a test because we've had two conflicting things. Some people are like we love the like two hour longer things. Mm. Other people are like split it down, make it like a nice a hour audio book thing. So yeah. this, we're trying out the idea of splitting a session this into is two. About an hour. We're doing a one shot in two parts. Yeah. Uh, and I think it'll give us more substance to play with in the story of the one shot. Uh, so we could do this from time to time. And then also at sometimes like the idea of doing a mini campaign in like three to four episodes, like mm. we did with the Ruin Witch. That worked really well, I thought. Anyway, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, stay tuned for this time next week. Whenever, maybe not, when, from the time this video was published next week, yeah. we'll publish part two. But oh. this has been, this was fun. I love the, there's something about that Warhammer Gothic, like, Rip that gets you. Yeah, I want. I like. I can't wait till you guys get nerded out into it even more, and we can like go really deep. Oh, in. yeah. Because I don't want to get too bogged into like really niche. We could lore like interactions. There could be like until uh, you're more comfortable. There could be cameos of our custom Space Marine chapters in future. <laughs> yeah. Oh hell yeah. Oh, we, uh, oh or Necrons chapters. Oh, dude, we can run that. Oh yeah, that'll be good. All right, well, we'll leave it there for now. We'll see you guys next week in part two. See ya. Bye.